fish on. All right, on the dick knife. And I'll bet you it feels kind of heavy. Might have a pound of weeds on here though, who knows? Oh, nice fish. What a beautiful fish. Oh, what a beautiful fish. Wow. Look at that. Oh, what a hog. And that's a dandy trout. Look at that beautiful rainbow. What a dandy fish. Wow. Awesome. Just totally awesome. Little tiny dick knight doing big work today. That's a really nice fish. That's two and a half, three pound fish. So awesome. Howdy folks, Cal Kellogg here. I'm coming to you today to answer a viewer question, but before I get into the question, I'm gonna have some fun with this guy because he is up in Mendocino County and he calls himself Tony 420. Now, what do you think Tony 420 does in his spare time? Obviously, he likes to go trout fishing, but I think he might be smoking a little bit of that, that loco weed, a little that wacky tobacco, you know, kind of the, kind of to relax a little bit and do whatever they do up there in Mendocino. Probably do some yoga and eat some tofu and maybe catch some trout and toke up with that big old bong. <laughs> anyway, uh, what's your mom going to think, Tony? You need to change that, that screen name. Anyhow, Tony asked me, he says, I know that you sell lures and he says, I see that you catch a lot of trout. He goes, but is it the lures or your approach? that allows you to consistently catch fish. And uh, that's actually a really good question, Tony. A lot of guys that sell or manufacture lures, they're gonna tell you, oh, this is the only lure that works. It works all the time. It's great, it's wonderful. It'll make your teeth whiter and you'll lose 15 pounds and it's just the greatest thing ever. They're lying to you, okay? Everything I do on the water is based on method. Okay, it's a systematic approach. Now, I've developed different lines of lures, but think of them as ornaments on a Christmas tree. The Christmas tree, it's the method. And I can hang different ornaments on that tree, but they have to, you know, adhere to the method. So, I'm, I'm gonna go over the method fairly quickly here, and I'm just gonna focus on spoons, but we could be talking about plugs, we could be talking about a bunch of different things, but let's just kind of focus on spoons. I'm gonna use some of my spoons, talk about some other spoons. I don't care what you use, you gotta have lures that imitate bait fish in general, and you can have lures that can run at different speeds. So, hit the water in the morning. Here's my philosophy, here's my methodology. Most of the time, hit the water, I want to go big, I want to go fast, I want to cover water, I'm going to rig up with a speed spoon. And I'm going to cover a maximum amount of water and I'm looking for fish, I'm looking for marks in the sonar, I'm looking for surface activity, I'm looking to find a concentration of fish that I can work on. Now a lot of times I'll catch fish right away aggressively trolling and that's great. If that bite holds up, stay with it all day long. If the bite slows down, or if I don't catch fish doing that, I start to slow down and downsize. So phase one, two and a half to about three and a half, maybe all the way up to four miles an hour, 
I'm pulling speed spoons. Now, if that's not working or I need to change, my next, next selection is gonna be something that I can run in that 2.3 to 2.7, you know, kind of mile an hour range. I'm gonna go with a trigger spoon. These work great at 2.4, 2.5, and as you can see, it's a little bit smaller, it's a little less bold than the speed spoon. So I'm downsizing and I'm slowing down. I've gone from 2.7 to 3 to, you know, something in that 2.3 to 2.5, you know, speed range. Maybe that works, maybe it doesn't. Maybe it works for a while, but then the bike gets tough. Time to slow down and downsize again. It's like downshifting in your car when the hill gets steeper. So my next choice, well, it's gonna be the Trigger Spoon Junior. Trigger Spoon Junior right there, you can see it's a lot smaller than the regular Trigger Spoon. This spoon runs great from 1.3 all the way up to two miles an hour, but the real sweet speed, 1.5 to 1.8. So as you can see, going from big, bold and fast to smaller, medium speed, to pretty small, pretty slow, and usually somewhere in that continuum, I'm gonna catch fish. If I don't, oh man, it's time to break the glass. It's, it's an emergency. I'm getting skunked now. And anybody who tells you they don't get skunked, they're an absolute liar. Um, I've been at this for decades. I get skunked. But due to my philosophy, due to my method, I don't get skunked very often. So if those three speed ranges and size ranges aren't producing, it's time to, to, to break out the emergency equipment. That is stuff like this Wee Dick Knight, troll it at 1 to 1.5, threaded worms, grubs, threaded gulp crawlers, maybe a fly. Slow it down, continue the, the philosophy of downsizing, and when you start breaking out the worms and the gulp, well, you're getting into that natural bait arena, the soft bait arena, and that's, that's really, you know, that's kind of your last ditch stuff that's gonna really stop you from getting skunked on a tough day. Now, let's talk about variations throughout the day. But that's the basic philosophy. Big and fast, smaller, medium size, smaller yet slow, slow, slow with tiny spoons and natural bait. That's, that's, that's my basic philosophy. And I'm assuming that somewhere in that progression of playing with the baits, I've located an area or an arm or a cove or a, a face on a, a rock shelf. I've located some marks. I've located some fish that I can play with, that I can mess with until they tell me what they want. Now, this often happens, you know, we're out in nature, conditions change constantly. So you hit the water, the fast stuff's working good, then that dies, the water goes to glass and all of a sudden maybe we're trolling those little dick nights and we're catching one fish an hour. But all of a sudden, that wind comes up. You see those white caps forming, you're getting surface current and you start to see those marks on the sonar screen that were say down 20 feet, you start to see them coming up to the surface again. Speed up, put on the trigger spoon, put on the speed spoon because there's a good chance that those fish that were really hard to catch just you know a half an hour ago, they're feeling a lot more comfortable, they're feeling a lot more aggressive, and by upping your speed again, you can rack up the strikes pretty fast. If you have any doubts about that, check out my humdinger video here on the channel. Oh, fish on. Almost got this one out. Fast and furious action here on the humdingers. We barely keep two lines in the water right now. now. It's not always like this, but these fish are active. There's a little ripple on the top, and uh, they're feeling feisty. The temperature's right, they're feeding, a lot of oxygen in the water, and uh, they want to get it on. They want a, a lure that's moving fast. Woo, there we go. There it is, fat little rainbow, chrome and blue. It was going about 2.7 when that one hit. I was out at uh, Sugar Pine Reservoir last year, the breeze came up and I absolutely put a whooping on those trout when they came up into that surface current. Um, they could not lay off that, that small eighth ounce humdinger and uh, I was catching them as fast as I could get the line in the water 
as long as the breeze held up. But uh, once the breeze started to die again, bike got tough again. Just as simple as that, just quick, fast. So remember, basic philosophy, the method, fast, big, medium, smaller, slow, small, downsize and reduce speed if you're struggling to get hit. And uh, if you do that, you are going to be consistently successful. There's not a magic method. There's not a magic lure. No, some days you're gonna get skunked. But if you apply my philosophy that I just outlined to you, you are gonna be consistently successful. You're gonna catch fish most days at any lake you fish. I don't care what lake it is, doesn't matter. Could be Shasta, Don Pedro, could be a high mountain lake. You apply that fast to slow philosophy, big to small philosophy, you're gonna fish systematically and you are gonna consistently catch fish as some of them are gonna be really big. Anyway, I hope that helps you out on the water, Tony. If you guys, including you, Tony, are looking for lures, go on over to the Fish Hunt Shoot Production Store. We got a full line of spoons and rods and reels and all that stuff. Um, please hit that subscribe button if you haven't done that and uh, hit that notification bell and you'll always know when I'm on here on YouTube jabbering about something. Anyway, I'm Kel Kellogg. I'm signing off for now. Um, I wanna thank you guys for all the support. I know these are stressful days. You know what's going on. I'm not even going to say the C word, uh, but uh, get out on the water if you can. And uh, once again, guys, thanks for all the support. I will be here on YouTube again real soon, and we will be talking fishing. I'm Kel Kellogg. I'm signing off. You guys have a great day.